All right, let's move on with the setup of our moving block. So I'm going to jump right back into Kismet, and the very next thing we're going to do is take away control from the player. We're going to do this with a toggle input. So let's right-click, go to New Action, Toggle, and come down to Toggle Input. We'll take the out of our object set, and we'll plug that into Turn Off. Now we need to specify the player here. So once again, we're going to right-click, go to New Variable, Player, choose Player, and switch off all players. Great, so now we've taken away control of the player. Next, we need to set up a new camera that we can transition over to. So let's close out of Kismet. Let's open up the content browser. And I'm going to dock that and then reopen it, because apparently I had a just a floating content browser there. So let's go over to Actor Classes. I'm going to grab the camera actor. Close that. Now right on top of the block, I'm going to right-click and choose Add Camera Actor here. Don't click Replace. Now, I'll center the pivot up on our block. And then we'll slide this up into the air and open up the properties because I have some fairly precise positioning for this. We're going to take the location and make sure that Z is set to 384. And we'll take rotation. We're going to set pitch to negative 90 to make the camera look down. And then yaw to 180 to spin it around so that the side that is going to slide toward the alcove kind of becomes the bottom of our view. Now, we need to, one, move our camera, our, uh, the view that's actually looking at the player, we need to switch over to this view. And then we need to lock that view such that that's where we're looking until we're finished. Basically, we're going to lock our player's view right here to this block. So let's head back over to Kismet. I'm going to right-click and create a new matinee. Now let's take the out of our toggle input, plug that into play. I'm going to double-click this matinee and set its overall time to just two and a half seconds. So that'll be the very first thing we do. Now let's create an empty group, which we're going to name camera. Now if you had your camera selected, you should get your camera actor attached. If you didn't, you'll need to go ahead and manually attach it at this point. This does remind me, though, that there's one more setting we need to set in our camera. Let's go ahead and double-click, and that's up here in the camera actor settings. Make sure you switch off constrain aspect ratio so that you don't get any black bars. All right, so now that we've got our camera in here, our next step is going to be to add a director group. Now, this gives us a director track right here at frame zero. I'm going to press enter on the director track, which will tell us to cut to group for the camera, which is perfect. Now, right click on that keyframe you just placed and set the transition time to two seconds. This means you're going to get a two second transition from the camera that's been watching the player to the camera that's now focused on the block. So that's pretty easy. Now, we're done with matinee at this point, so we'll go ahead and close that out. Let's jump back over into Kismet. And next, we're going to add a set camera target action. So right click, new action, camera, set camera target. Plug the completed to the input of this. Now, a player variable is going to be used for the target. So let's just grab our player zero over here, copy, paste. And the target cam will be this guy, which he's close enough that we could just plug it in like so. And that should work just fine. Okay, now, moving down from here, the next thing we need to do is open up a UI scene. Now, what I'm going to do is show you the UI scene already completed so you can get an idea of it. So, let's right-click, go to New Action, UI Scenes, Open Scene, and we'll go ahead and get this connected. Now, the scene that we're going to use, in particular, we're going to open up the content browser, and I'll show it to you. This is called UI Block Move. Now, it's probably got the most going on from all the other UI scenes that we've seen so far, because most of those were really just glorified labels. Uh, they didn't do much. However, in this case, we have these four arrows, and if we double-click them and take a look in their focused area, we've got some stuff that's going on. Each one of these has its own activate level event, and they're all named accordingly. For instance, we have move down on this one, which is the down arrow, uh, if we grab the right arrow and double-click it, 
and go over to its focus state, you'll notice that we have move right. So these have all been set up for us beforehand. Now, the only other thing is if we grab the Kismet for the scene in general, which means if we deselect and just right-click and open up the Unreal Kismet editor, and then we check out the focus state here, we have set the state input events so that we're overriding our escape key. Now, I want to show you how to actually do this. All you have to do is double-click on this input state event. So when you come in, what you're going to see is something... In fact, let me go ahead and just set it back. You'll see something fairly like this. All you're going to do is double-click, scroll down, and find IE Escape. So you're going to find the Escape key in here. So scroll down. EF... I know alphabetical order. So here we go. Escape pressed. We're going to move that over like so and click OK. So now we're overriding the escape key. Now, what is the escape key going to do? Well, it fires off an activate level event, which is named reset camera from UI. Why are we doing this? We're doing this because we are taking the player's view and locking it to this block. If they hit escape, that means they don't want to move this block and we've got to be able to hand control back. So later on, we're going to set up a Kismet event using this uh, this activate remote event or activate level event that will transition back over if the player decides to hit escape and not move the block. Once they've done that, we close off the scene. So that's an important that's a, a look at the important parts of our UI block move. So let's go ahead and close out of here. Make sure that UI block move is selected. Let's go over here to Kismet. Go ahead and expand that. And then here for our scene, we're just going to make sure that the UI block move scene is plugged into the scene property. So at the, I guess the very least we could do at this point is just test this out. So let's close out, start up the level, and we walk up to the block, and we lock over to the view, and we get our arrows. Now currently these don't do anything. We click them, they make a noise, and that's it. If we hit escape... We still don't really get anything because we haven't set up any kind of event in our Kismet that will pass control back over to the player. But it's a start. So at this point, go ahead and save your level and then we'll continue from here.